Hey everyone, Dockwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Axe. So Axe is a strength offlaner, and as such he can be extremely tanky. But just because he's tanky and he's an offlaner doesn't mean that, you know, he just walks around tanking things. He can also do a lot of damage, and a lot of pure damage. And so because of that, if you don't know, pure damage ignores all magic immunity and armor. And so due to that reason, he can be a threat even in the late game, doing a significant amount of damage. But really, what he's good at is picking people off and initiating fights or counter-initiating fights. So, unlike other offlaners who are really good at, you know, standing in the front, being kind of a wall, and preventing people from walking past them, or, you know, going around them, or those kinds of things. They just kind of stand in front of the fight, they tank a lot, they just kind of siege towers, those kinds of things, or protect towers. Axe sort of can do that, but really what you want to do with Axe is either to initiate to pick somebody off, or to wait in sort of the back after a team fight happens, or in the middle of a team fight to counter-initiate and get a good uh, call um, an AoE disable on a lot of heroes. And so as an offlaner, um, that's tanky and those kinds of things. He does have an AoE disable that can hit multiple people. And he's actually one of the only heroes, if not I think the only hero, that has a normal skill that is an AoE BKB piercing disable. And also it can't be purged. So if you watched my Slark guide, um, you would know what I mean by can't be purged. Basically nothing in the game can take away the... Uh, disable that he applies called Berserker's Call, and we'll take a look at that in a second. So, basically, a few things about Axe. Like I said, tanky, obviously an offlaner, but likes to initiate or counter-initiate fights, initiate pickoffs and counter-initiate fights. Doesn't necessarily like to be a wall that just kind of stands in people's way, but also can do that, and he does significant damage into the late game due to the pure damage, as well as the fact that he does um, an AoE disable that pierces a BKB, so that's honestly one of his biggest strengths. Um, so that's pretty much how Axe works, and now we can take a look at his skills. So now that we understand what Axe does in general and how he offlanes, we'll take a look at his abilities and how they enable him to tank and do some damage and be effective like I said. So first we're going to take a look at Battle Hunger because it's kind of the odd one out for his whole kit. It may get changed in the future, I don't know, and then I'll have to remake the guide, but for now all it really does is you click on a hero um, and it applies a debuff that slows them and they do... They take damage over time until they last hit a creep. So really all you use this for is just to get a little bit of extra damage in and to harass people during the laning stage. And that's kind of the extent to which this uh, this skill is used. So we can move on to his the rest of his kit and what makes him a good hero. And the first one we can take a look at is Berserker's Call. And this is the AoE ability that I was talking about that pierces BKB and can't be dispelled. So, basically what it does is in that AoE, like you were seeing, it uh, makes every enemy, uh, hero, and creep in that AoE attack him. So we'll see there, Slark is now attacking him, and he cannot stop attacking him for the duration. So Slark has a Dispel, as we have seen in the Slark Guide, but if you didn't see that, I'll just show it to you again. So he can dispel any stun or anything else that is dispellable, but Axe Call isn't, so we'll try this with his Q. And then Axe Calls. We see the Q goes off, but now I'm selecting Slark. I can't run away until the duration is over. And so that's what's really good about Slark Q, is it's pretty much, for now, you cannot get away from it. Once you're called, you're hitting Axe. And if you saw, while you're hitting Axe, there's a chance that he spins around like that. And that's what's called Counter Helix. Now this ability is what allows him to do a lot of damage. So the more people that are attacking Axe, the more creeps or heroes or what have you, the higher the chance, obviously, that he spins and does a counter helix that does pure damage. And because it's pure, it ignores, like I said before, it ignores uh, armor and ignores um, magic resist resistance, those kinds of things. So it can do a lot of damage later in the game. And now, finally, we'll take a look at his ultimate ability on this uh, CM here. And what it does is, let's say you get people down pretty low, is it is like a finishing move um, to make sure that you can secure kills. So you might get someone really low in the duration, but now you know they're gonna run away. Well, what you can do is you can use the Culling Blade to kill them. When, just like that. And when they're under a certain percentage of health, they just insta-die, basically. And then it gives you and your teammates around that a, a movement speed and attack speed buff for a short period of time. But if they don't die, and you kind of have to judge the percentage, like based on the health bar, if they don't die, what it does is 
it just does a little damage and then it goes on cooldown. So that's the other thing, if you do get a kill, there is no cooldown. So that's kind of the finishing move for Axe, while his Berserker's Call and his Counter Helix are the main spells that make the hero good. Enemies so if we go killing. here, we can just refresh real quick. How you want to play Axe is you kind of want to be sitting in the back or maybe you're, you know, this guy's just farming or doing something here and he doesn't see you. You oh. just want to blink in, call, obviously maybe apply this, attack a bunch, do some spins. Let's say they get low and then you use your Culling Blade to, you know, finish them off. And meanwhile, also, if you're with other heroes, you're with allies and those kinds of things, they can throw stuns in, they can throw in damage, those kinds of things. But as you can see, it can be extremely potent in team fights or for picking people off to, you know, counter initiate and those kinds of things. So that's pretty much what Axe's abilities do. And now we can jump into a replay and see how it's implemented. So now that we understand Axe in general and we know what his abilities do, we can take a look at Zai here playing Axe in the offlane. And so he is paired up with an Io, which gives him a little bit more regen and tankiness, so it does change the lane a little bit. But at the same time, with another replay we'll see later, he is playing a, against um, a Witch Doctor, which has Maledict, obviously, and can do a ton of damage. So it kind of counterbalances um, the matchup out. And so because of this, we want to see that Axe is playing relatively passive in the beginning. Now, he's using his battle hunger first to just kind of annoy the enemy and such, but we see he's kind of just playing it as a carry. He's trying to get his last hits. He's not being too aggressive because, yes, he is a strength hero that's tanky, but, you know, he only has his first point in one of his worst skills, you know. He doesn't have any points in Berserker's Call or Counter Helix yet. Obviously, he doesn't have his ult, but he's not the strongest in the very beginning of the laning stage. Yes, like I said, he's tanky as a strength hero and those kinds of things, but he's not the best to be super aggressive with early on. He doesn't have the best early spells, um, so he needs levels. He maybe needs an item or two, you know, just like a Vanguard or finishing the boots, those kinds of things, before he can get really aggressive. So we'll fast forward it here and just see that, you know, he's just generally trying to farm the creeps um, get as many creeps as possible, similar to a carry, in honest. Um, and, you know, we see that they'll go on his uh, IO, these kinds of things. He's generally pl playing fairly passive, not trying to get too aggressive, other than when he sees that the enemy has stepped out of position like they did there. And if we just kind of go to four times speed, we'll see, you know, he's just getting creeps, like I said, therefore um, not being too aggressive. Uh, and now, you know, he clears the wave. Now he's level three. And so he can sees that the pool is going on. And so Axe is a really good hero to contest pools like this because now that he has counter helix and he's level three, he can, you know, the more creeps that are attacking him, and especially with the IO, the uh, more damage he'll deal. So you see that the jug here has to run away. And then he skills his Berserker's Call to stop that TP. And with the IO, he's extremely... Um, tanky and a lot of regen you see that they even end up killing the axe because of the positioning and obviously the io helped but the jug had to pretty much run away from the axe there because of all of those creeps that if axe called him with those creeps he definitely would have died so now axe is off to a great start they got a kill on jug he's farming really well you know he's up here third on uh, CS, doing way better than Jug, and now from here, the lane just kind of snowballs out of control in the sense that he pretty much can just farm and do whatever he wants here. And you see, they're even able to dive the, the tier 1 tower and be really aggressive onto the Witch Doctor because of what they basically were able to do now, which is get a lot of farm, get a lot of levels up, and now that's when Axe is strong. So he, you see, he dives the Witch Doctor, he comes there, he grabs the wave, he farms the wave, and the small camp, which is something that is really, really good on Axe. So I'm going to show you that again, just because it's such a good thing to do on Axe once you've had a good lane. So we see that they obviously dive the Witch Doctor here, um, because they know for a fact, you know, the Witch Doctor is not strong enough to handle the Axe and the Io right now. And obviously the Tiny's here too, as well, zoning off the Jugs, so that's why they were able to do that. But now you see, okay, the Witch Doctor's dead, they're winning the lane, the Tiny's annoying the, and actually killing the Jug. So now do we, what do we do? We go to this lane, we pull the lane into the small camp, and we have all six creeps hitting Axe at the same time, and he's able to farm the small camp and the creeps all at once very, very quickly. And so that's something that you definitely want to do later on in the laning stage with Axe. It's a really, really good thing. It's a really good strategy. And now, along with that, you're also putting a lot of pressure on the tower here. And, you know, 
they he can pretty much just go back, back off, not uh, pressure the tower, and uh, hit these creeps here and get them like pull them, like I said before, and possibly even pull them into the big camp or pull them into the small camp if it respawns, those kinds of things. Um, and the other thing that this allows you to do is be really, really aggressive on the support, or now, you know, you see Jugs here trying to deal with this wave, deal with the catapult, and they can be aggressive on him if they want as well. And now he has boots, and that even allows him to be tankier, be even more aggressive, those kinds of things. Um, and so that is just generally how you want to play Axe. And from here, he's level 5, almost level 6. There's pretty much nothing that the enemy team can do to him unless he you know, severely misplays, because the tower is not going to be do that, doing that much damage with the IO backing him up. And uh, the only reason, honestly, that he didn't go Vanguard probably is that he has an IO, but otherwise you would probably be similarly tanky with a Vanguard and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's just a great example of how you do want to play Axe and how Axe can go really well in the laning stages. You know, play a little bit passive early, don't get too aggressive, don't die and get caught out, and then once you have a few levels and a few items, you can, you know, clear stacks, clear the wave and the jungle at the same time, be really aggressive and apply a lot of uh, pressure to the tower as we see the tower is already about to die here at seven and a half minutes. And so, that's Zai on Axe, and now we're going to show you a... Uh, game of what not to do on Axe and how Axe can go really badly if you make some mistakes early on in the game. So we'll jump into that replay quick here in a second. So now we're going to jump in here to a replay of Excalibur playing Axe. And with this replay specifically, I actually am going to show you in some ways how not to play Axe. Um, but that's mainly because to play Axe correctly, it can be kind of boring. What you want to do, generally, is obviously you're a little bit tanky in the beginning of the game, you know, generally as a strength hero, but you pretty much just want to play a little safe, get your levels up, get some farm up, um, because once you have, you know, once you hit 6 or 5 or 6, you know, once you hit these later levels, the later part of the laning stage, you maybe get a vanguard or, you know, um, you finish your boots, those kinds of things. You'll just be way more of a threat. You can bully people way more. So you kind of want to survive the laning stage until that point. And that can be generally boring. You almost play it like a carry in some ways. And then uh, you want to just kind of farm up, get your blink, those kinds of things. But here we're going to see that obviously Axe is doing that in the beginning, but because it's a Witch Doctor lane and Maledict is such a good spell, um, he's actually at threat constantly, um, and he doesn't have very much to deal with that. He's Yes, he's so kind of tanky, but he doesn't have Berserker's Call yet. He went for the Counter Helix to do damage, and you see he gets the PL low, but because of the Maledict, he actually dies. And... So we'll kind of just speed it up from here, and we'll see that that death kind of snowballs. And yes, like I said, it's the, the Witch Doctor that's kind of the problem, but that death just snowballs the lane in a way that is not good for Axe, because once you fall behind a little bit, you start to, you know, lose your level advantage, you start to lose, lose your level parity with the enemy, and then you're not tanky, you can't bully, you can't run at the support and just, uh, you know, use your call and spin on him like he would want to do. You see, he's constantly getting bullied out, by the uh, by the witch doctor here and now this is what I want to show you that you can do is after a certain port uh, point in the game I think it's like three minutes or something like that you can actually run behind the tower and pull the creeps and they know that he's gonna do that so you know tiny comes with him they go to kill the uh, the witch doctor here but again because of the maledict it does a ton of damage to the axe and he dies again but normally in a, a good game or a game where you know uh, you're not dying like this, or there's not a witch doctor completely owning you. You, at times, if you don't really like to bully, if you don't want to be a bully, you know, up in the lane, you fell a little bit behind, you can go cut those creeps, maybe pull the creeps into the small camp, farm both of them, those kinds of things. And if you're somewhat tanky, um, the enemy kind of can't do anything about it. But now that he's fallen behind, it's going to be much, much harder for him to really do anything in this lane. You see, he's going to try to cut creeps again, but they know that's what he's going to try to do, and again, they just get really aggressive on him and kill him again. So now, you know, he is level 4, the PL's going to be level 6 here in a moment, and he just, there's almost nothing he can do. And if he comes back to the lane and it's not under his tower, he's probably going to die again. You know, right here, he dies again because he comes back. There's just no way that he can come back to the lane. And so that's kind of what I wanted to show you not to do. Because I think, obviously, a good axe game is one where you're just, like I said, farming up, uh, hitting the creeps, getting your items up, and being a bully. 
And so that's kind of what you don't want to do. You don't want to be too aggressive with axe. And so that's kind of what I wanted to show you here to make it more of a more understandable of how exactly you want to play axe in the early game. So the next thing I want to show you is basically how to counter initiate or initiate with Axe with the Blink Dagger. And so this is later on in the game. Excalibur has slightly recovered. Um, their team is still behind, but they don't know that he has Blink yet. They have not seen it. So what you'll notice here is that he kind of hides in the trees. He, see, he knows that they don't have vision on him, and he just waits for the perfect moment when the Hoodwink is out of position, calls, kind of walks backward, and then... Uh, Basically, you know, there's enough time for the ally heroes around the tower that are also trying to defend it to do enough damage to take the Hoodwink down. Now, he obviously uses the call a little bit too early there. And what you notice that he also did was he kind of walked backwards because what he is trying to do is, in the duration of the call, kind of walk away from the Hoodwink. And we'll rewind it here. You don't really see it happen exactly. Um, but see, he walks away there because the Hoodwink has to attack. So, that's usually better for melee heroes, that if you walk away and you kind of run away from the melee heroes, they have to follow you. So, it's a good way to get them out of position. Now, a long uh, ranged hero like Hoodwink, it doesn't really work as much on. So, he kind of did that a little bit there, but uh, it didn't, you know, really do anything at that point. But that's still a thing that you can do, especially if you have a high movement speed, you know, you get those phase boots or whatever. That's something else you want to do. But that's pretty much what you want to do with Axe once you get the Blink Dagger, is wait for those... Um, counter initiation if there's already a fight those good opportunities to counter initiate or wait for those good opportunities to hide in the trees and blink onto an enemy hero when they're unsuspecting and uh, catch them out and hopefully either you have enough damage because you're having a good game or you have uh, allies around you that can help you kill off that hero so that's pretty much how you play axe mid game with his blink so the next clip I want to show you is just basically how Axe can be extremely effective at initiating and uh, starting off ganks. So we see that he groups up with his team here. They smoke up, looking for a pickoff. And what I want to show you is that Axe can be very good at catching people out of position even when he doesn't see them. Now this is obviously a very good play, but you see them walk up and he instantly blinks on the high ground and catches out the SF. Now let's watch that again. But let's uh, slow it down here a bit once we get up to the point. So they're obviously smoked. The enemy doesn't see them. And if you don't know, basically once the they know there's an enemy hero around them, that's when the smoke breaks and what the... Uh... So there you go. What will happen is the smoke breaks when an enemy, enemy hero is fairly close. So they're walking up here. It breaks and they instantly know, okay, there must be an enemy close by. So that's when, obviously, he instantly blinks and presses call, and fortunately, he catches out the SF. Now, that's kind of more of like a, not an advanced play, but obviously you have to know, you know, the AoE break of smoke, that kind of thing, just have a general feel for it, and then instantly react there. But that's a great way to show you that, you know, the SF probably saw him, but within that split second that he saw him, there was almost nothing he could do because Axe blinked in and called, and within that time frame of that call, they were able to kill the, uh, the SF, and it started off the fight really well. Now, obviously, the PL is still kind of going crazy, but here's another example. You know, the the Axe, he was kind of sitting in back the entire time. Although he's really tanky and he's hard to bring down, he wasn't in the front of the fight, you know, trying to be annoying like some other tanky offlaners. He was sort of sitting in the back waiting for another opportunity to blink in. See, this is exactly what he's doing now again. He's just kind of sitting in the back, letting the Ursa front line, waiting for another great opportunity to blink in. Unfortunately, there wasn't another good opportunity. His team just all died and he had to get out. But that's pretty much how you want to be playing Axe. You jump in, you call, you do a ton of damage, you get an ult off, those kinds of things. Uh, then you kind of reset, you go back, you sit in the back of the fight, you analyze, you know, what should I be doing now, where's another good opportunity, those kinds of things, blink back in, call again, and because call has such a short cooldown, um, 11 seconds here on the, uh, on the max level, it's something that you can use multiple times in a team fight. so that's kind of how you want to be playing Axe, and yes, he can frontline, he can be a wall, he can tank very well, but... It's much better to catch heroes out of position by blinking on top of them, calling one or two, maybe three, and doing a ton of damage and allowing your team to uh, to just dish out a ton of damage and burst those heroes down. So that's pretty much how you want to be playing Axe mid-game with pickoffs, but also in team fights as well. It's kind of just gauging when and how many times you can get in there for a good blink call. 
And that, my friends, is my Axe Guide. I hope it helps you understand Axe a little bit better and know how to play him in the offlane role. That he is kind of tanky, but he is a counter initiator. He's a ganker and those kinds of things. But also to understand, you know, why he is so good at these different things based on his abilities and how exactly to play him in the laning stage. So I hope that helped you out and I hope you uh, gain MMR after watching this video, you know, if you're new or what have you. If you like this video, obviously please like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. If you have any suggestions or questions that I didn't answer, please leave a comment and let me know. Also, if you have a replay of an axe, uh, game that you want me to take a look at, I'd be happy to do that. Or any hero in general that you want me to take a look at, I'd be happy to, and to go over it for you. So, until next time, thanks a lot, and see you guys in the next video.